that y'all provide for our student athletes and and our university and our football program. I, you know, I've been a, a number of places over the years, and I uh, much respect for the job you do. I know it's I know it's difficult to to be the one ever to break a story or, or have the coverage, but you guys uh, are as good as I've, I've, I've ever seen and uh, much respect and thank you uh, for the coverage that you give our student athletes because there's, there's a lot of time you guys are the, you're the story, right? You're, you're the ones that tell, tell the story about our program, about, about our kids, and there's so many, you get 120 different uh, moving parts in our program with our, with our team and you know, there's a lot of great things other than those three and a half hours on a Saturday that that you get to tell the story for our public to see and our fans and and all the donors. So thank you so much for that. And um, I think uh, look at where we're at progress wise with with our team defensively. I think number one, the practice structure that Coach Pittman has laid out in front of us, it has allowed us really to look and and move guys and cross train them whether it's. And especially in the back end, you know, can you play corner? Can it be field? Can it be boundary? Can we move you to safety and get some reps there? I think that's so important for us on at least how we play defensively that they can play a number of spots. And we've got to be, you know, Dominique Bowman, a, a hire that we made this coaching our defensive backs, and then Deke Adams uh, up front with the defensive line. Those guys and, and Mike Shear uh, with our linebackers returning, they've been great teachers. And, and that's the most important part. It doesn't really matter what we know, whether we're out there in a three down or four down or eight down, it doesn't matter as you know, what we know as coaches, as, as long as we can get it taught to our kids, then we're going to have a chance. And we talk about our team bottom line all the time defensively is knowing your assignments, playing tough and physical, play with energy and enthusiasm, and then being a six second competitor. And when you can do those things and you can teach them really what the schematics are supposed to look like, you allow them to train in, in those spots and then go play fast. You know, we've, we've recruited well enough that we've got really good team speed on defense. And now it's just understanding schematically, what can we do? How much can we do? Uh, we're trying to throw a lot at them right now. So credit to our kids on, on being willing learners. They, they want to be coached. Uh, and I'm excited about the progress now that we've made, I guess, through nine practices and, and look forward to getting into next week and, and making another run. It'll be another step next week on, on trying to fix some things, make corrections, and then continue to pour in uh, what we're doing uh, with our install. Yeah, Coach, kind of to your point, I wanted to ask you about a couple of specific examples. Um, Malik Chavis is a guy that came as a corner, played yeah. safety last year, and now you've moved him to corner. And uh, Kari Johnson is a guy that played corner, yeah. and now you've moved him to safety. And then Jaden Johnson is a guy that played nickel, and now you've moved him to safety. And uh, Miles Slusher was a safety, and now you've moved him to nickel. What goes into that dynamic? Is that like just trying to get guys in different spots, or is it like, hey, we think this – I might just be a better fit here. Yeah, the way that we've we've taught it defensively is is meeting together, and they understand, you know, not only the assignment in in our quarters coverage or man free. If you're the boundary corner, if you're the field safety, you better you better know because I think it's important that you understand where you have help, where you don't, when you play, and and no better way than right now during during spring is to cross train guys and really find out. I, I think Malik. Chavis can play every spot we have on the back end. I really do. He's that skilled athletically. I think we're trying to find his best spot, and and it may be corner. Uh, but also, I know if we had you know a, a, an injury or something at at one of the safety spots, Malik could step in today because because he's played it before, and he could go step in and hopefully not miss a beat. Same thing with Slusher. I think he can play either the corner spots, any of the safety spots, and the nickel position. That's hard to do. There's not many guys that can do that, in my opinion, at the level that he's doing it. So um, a lot of that goes into you know staff time talking about how do we get the best 11 on the field? And then you find, well, what's the best backup in that spot? It's always roster management and getting your best pieces in the right spots. And you know Kyrie, it, it, he struggled um, the first – two days that he was at safety just because it was so new. He'd been at corner and, and normally just one side of the field. And we moved him to one of the middle safety spots. And he's looking, he's like, my goodness, there's so much space out here. Uh, but today he had his best day. So I'm excited about him being able to do that. Him also being able to maybe next week go in and get some snaps again at corner. Uh, I think this makes us better, a lot more versatile uh, if, we, if we have the ability to move some guys around. Your thoughts so far on Latavius Brini and Dwight McLeather and how, yeah, how they've been so far? Really excited that we have both of them. Uh, they've they've both got 
real game experience in, in the arena of playing SEC ball. They're talented. Uh, they've got a high football IQ. Uh, they're they're going to make our team better. They're going to make our defense better. And, and credit to our team on welcome, welcoming them with, with open arms. They, they feel like now since they've been here in January until today, I feel like you know it doesn't feel like they're the new guy anymore. Uh, and that that takes both sides. It takes a very unselfish person uh, that was at you know two different places that played at a high level, and then they come in and you know within this roll them out there and start them with the ones. They've they've got to go earn it, and and they're, they've done a great job understanding uh, the the scheme, but also being a great teammate. It feels like on each of the units you're getting pressure, and I'm wondering like what has led to the ability to, to get the pressure, and um, how often are you blitzing? Well, I think. You know, I, I, I don't know. I'll have to look after today's practice. Some of it's scripted, and then some of it we just call it like it would be a game. So there's some things that I'm calling presser-wise that I probably never would in a game, uh, but I want to get it on tape and uh, against a look that I'm talking about, a specific look. So, But I'm trying to get it on film to be able to teach off of it because after spring ball is over, you know, we've still got time with our kids in the classroom. We can sit down and, and talk and teach, and they've got to understand. So we're calling a number of things now to get them on tape to be able to understand. And then it, it's also to find out who is our best blitzer, you know, who is out of our, our four-down look, who is the maybe their best edge rusher. Can we get him singled up on, on a one-on-one -on -one block? So... Um, We've thrown a lot at them, and I think this is the first time you know since I've been here that we've been able to do that because it's the returners that we have. They understand, um, you know, what we have called previously, and now we have the ability to build on that. It makes it pretty exciting. So um, we, we've done a number of different things pressure-wise, uh, and, and we've got a whole other package coming next week. So I'm excited about see where we can go with it. Sam touted Isaiah Nichols and Torian Carter to us the other day, and it looks to me like Carter's flashing a lot. Who who falls into that category for you that is consistently on tape doing doing those things? Yeah, I think uh, Deke Adams has done a really good job with that group. Uh, you know, the the times that he's had them now in the meeting room and then on the field, and how they've taken that information and and then processed it and and then got to a live situation and, and able to go execute it. Um, I think some of that goes with Torian and, and Isaiah. They've got a number of reps with real game experience, which has helped them. Zach Williams keeps coming. Eric Gregory is, you know, doesn't show up as much in the stat sheet, but, man, he's really solid and, and has been a good player for us inside. Cam Ball's coming on and doing a lot of really good things. Jasad Stewart, in my opinion, has probably had his best um, – you know, period of practices back to back, consistency wise. So I think he's getting a, an understanding on what we need out of him in that role. So collectively as a group, whether you know whatever front we're in, whether whatever defense we're in, I think they've made strides, maybe more than any other group in my opinion right now uh, through nine practices, uh, a, at least on the defensive side. Barry, you mentioned earlier just talking to the guys about being six second competitors. Is that a a message that you've relayed to your guys throughout your careers at Arkansas specific, yeah, and then that, how that, how is this group kind of soaking that in? Yeah, that was that that's been developed for you know, and, and uh, you know everybody's going to be mad when I say this because you know the guy that I got it from is a guy I worked for forever, and Gary Pinkle. That was his his bottom line on on how he established the foundational aspects of the program from from Toledo and then when he was at Missouri and and it works and you look at if you take the the game of football and it's it's four quarters but it's also if you can get it down to playing six seconds at a time when and knowing what you're doing and play with relentless energy and effort and those things um, so I'm I'm trying to get that message across to our team every single day so every time that we have a unit meeting. That is that's as big and as bold as we can get it on the on the screen. Just because I've seen it work, it worked for us last year. On you know the the great thing about when you play hard uh, and you play harder than your opponent, and you do it for longer, you're going to put yourselves in position to play winning football. You know, one of our goals is to, is to eliminate explosive plays. And one way that you can do that, number one, you understand what you're doing. You know, so we've got to be great teachers. They've got to be great learners. But also, don't put your kids in position to do something that they can't do. I mean, it's pretty simple. You know, don't ask them to, to be a great blitzer if they're not a really good blitzer. And you've got to teach them to get, you know, and find out what they can do. But you also look, if you play hard, okay, and you play as hard as you can play for six seconds, okay, or till, from the time the ball snapped to the whistle blows, you're going to give your – self and your defense a chance to play winning football you can go somebody may go miss a tackle okay but if you've got 10 other guys running to the ball 
then you're going to keep that from going to an explosive play. So it all ties together. Uh, it's just an easy way for our guys to remember it, and you can show it, and it shows up every day on film. And the great thing right now, just like it started last year, our team defensively is is they're running that. So if you don't run hard to the ball, you got about four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys in the defensive room. Uh, you're on full display, and they're and they're calling the guy out. So it's more player led now at this point. And that that speaks to the the culture of what Coach Pittman has recruited to the culture that we've got in our program, and uh, it's pretty exciting to be a part of. You really had three first team linebackers at two positions. Are you kind of looking for that this year? And if you if you are, kind of who you see besides Volfer and maybe Sanders? Yeah, I think you look at that position in our conference. You know, it's really really hard, in my opinion, to go a, a twelve game regular season just with two linebackers. Uh, the physicality of the league, the way that the number of snaps that you play, all those different things into it. So, you know, Coach Shear's done a nice job, and he's been in the system as a player, now as a coach. He understands it. Um, so we've got to get you – know, also, in, in my opinion, we need to get really five guys in, in those two spots that you feel like you can go play winning football with. And, you know, Chris Paul's done a great job. Uh, Bumper returning with all the experience he has. Drew Sanders. Uh, Woodard has done a nice job. Jordan Crook. Uh, Caden Henley, both, you know, freshmen they are coming in. There's a lot of competition going on. And, uh, you know, once we get a guy, I don't, I don't really defensively, I don't look at what year is he. Is he a senior? Is he a freshman? He, he's our guy. Let's get him coached up and ready to go play winning ball. So, you know, Crook and Henley have only been here for a couple months. You know, we're yelling and screaming at them. They ought to be going to biology class in high school. But um, I'm glad they're here because they've shown so far, and I'm proud they've got an opportunity to get in position to help us this year in, in some role, in some capacity. Coach, um, I was curious about uh, Deke Adams and, and Dominic Bowman. You obviously had a lot of input in the hiring process with those guys being the guy for defense. What was it about both of them that – you know, led you guys to say, hey, this is our guy. Cause Coach, Coach Bowman's, you know, relatively young. And, you know, was it Marshall? Deke Adams has been around the block a little bit more. When speaking about Dominique first, uh, when I was a, an assistant coach at uh, University of Memphis, Dominique was a, a high school coach. I think he was at Cordova High School. And we had a camp, and a bunch of the high school coaches came and worked. And Dominique walked in and ran. You know, we worked together. I was the secondary coach. Um, and we worked together on putting drills together and then going on the field and, and coaching. And Dominique blew it out of the way. He just was unbelievable off the charts on the way that he taught. And I we I kind of followed his career. That was in 2000, I don't know, probably that was 2012 or 13. Um, and I followed his career from there. was so impressed with him and always – you know, with, with social media now and the way that uh, the coaching circles are, you can follow a guy pretty closely and maybe they don't even know it. But I always, you know, his team's played at a high level in the positions he coached. I, I, and I heard him speak at a number of different clinics over the year. I had kind of reached out, you know, a, a few years ago, just continuing to try to maintain a relationship. Um, so once I knew we had an opening at that spot, that, you know, there's a number of guys that were qualified that, that wanted to be here. Um, you know, my focus went went pretty quickly to him to see if we had an opportunity. Uh, and then with Deke, uh, you know, knew about Deke because uh, name recognition, number one, of what he had done in, in our conference up until, you know, he, he was out of it last year. But I knew about Deke this from afar a little bit more than uh, had never really been around him. But, you know, he was at Ole Miss, was at Mississippi State. Uh, he'd been at South Carolina. I think he and, and Coach Pittman knew of each other a little bit more than, than I knew Deke. But we've got a guy in our program in a personnel department, Brian Overton, that had worked with Deke recently. And, and he this mentioned to him, and he didn't push him at all. He goes, hey, this, you know, why don't you check this guy out? And uh, made a lot of calls, spent a lot of hours on the phone with a number of different people. And I thought Deke was the right guy at the right time for, for our program. And, and uh, man, what a joy both of those guys have been to be around. So on a guy that's um, that's not playing right now, Landon Jackson, yeah. like uh, obviously he's tremendously put together, big dude. What kind of role do you think that he could possibly have, and what yeah. did you guys like about him when you? Recruited? 
recruiting him out of the portal? Yeah, uh, we knew about uh, Landon when he was in high school, and I recruited him, uh, tried to get him hard. And so I've known he and his family for now a couple years because of the relationship that goes back to when he was in high school. Uh, comes from a great program in, in Texarkana and Pleasant Grove. And, you know, they I think they won – they at least won one championship, maybe two, uh, when he was a player there. Uh, he was coached really well. Uh, in that program, but also he's got he's got uh, a unique skill talent. I mean, he's six. He may be six seven. I mean, I, I don't know what we list him at. He's six six and some change for sure. Two seventy five. Got a great explosion on what I know about him. You know, anxious to get him back on the field, but also know that you know we're not trying to rush it and uh, understand that he's going to number one be able to provide depth. And I think he's got the ability to be an edge rusher for us, in which we need. And uh, we've got guys in Eric Thomas that's done a nice job, and Zach Williams and Jashad Stewart. You know, we we've got to get a, another guy in there just from the rotation standpoint. And hopefully that that Landon can step in and do that for us. Sam has been very enthusiastic about the stability at coordinators. And I'm wondering, you, you've had options. What's kept you here for a third year and what, what's going on here? Yeah, there's going to be – I mean, if, if, you, if your players play really well, you're, you're, going, to have, you're going to have opportunities every year. That, that's not going to change. Um, my thought process on having an opportunity to come back with this group a, another year was you know above above everything the most important thing number one uh the culture that sam Pittman has every day in our working environment you can't beat it uh, i don't you know i've not worked that many places but you can't tell me it's better somewhere else i think we've got a great uh, administrative support the fan base is the, the the best i've ever seen it's it's unbelievable I believe with the team that we have, the way we've been able to recruit, my family is really happy here. I'm excited and happy to be here. I think we can achieve great success here. Uh, so all those things combined, um, if if there's an opportunity for me to be a, you know, I had opportunities as, you know, in, in um, you know, a couple of things this off season to be a head coach again. I'm not going to go take a head coaching position again just to say I did it. I don't. I don't need that. My my ego doesn't need it. I don't need it. I'm having as fun as I've ever had coaching uh, being here. And I don't know if fun has anything to do with it, but I enjoy getting up and going to work every day. The student athletes that I've got a chance to coach right now, they're bought in. They like to play ball. They like to practice. They like to compete. They're doing a great job academically. It's a fun group to be around. Some day, some year, if a head coaching opportunity presents itself, um, then, then I may go make a run at it. But it's got to be the right fit with the right alignment. And, and uh, I feel like Arkansas is a special place. I feel like it is, um, you know, for me and my family and what we have going on defensively and program-wise, um, it's the best job in the country for me right now. It appears as if you're not tackling to the ground as much, maybe with the ones. Is that specific to this team, or what's, what's well, happening there? Well, there wasn't supposed to be any tackling to the ground today, so I'm going to go in and get yelled at from the head coach. On, on We're supposed to all stay up today. So the ones are a little better at that today uh, than the twos and threes. So that's, that's my fault on that. Um, we're trying to do a lot of to-the-ground tackling in our individual drills. I think there's ways that you teach tackling that you don't have to go completely to the ground. Um, so we're, we're smart with that. I think you've got to get an understanding on uh, what that looks like. And you better be comfortable with it because here in two more weeks, you know, there's no tackling until, until we get back in, in August for fall camp. So, um, you know, am, am I ever thinking, well, we're, we can't become a better tackling team? No, I don't, I don't think that. Um, we've got to continue to play fast. We've got to play together. We've got to run to the ball. And... You know, the, the thing Coach Shear brought up last year, he said, let's, let's phrase it, let's, let's have a race to the ball. And that was kind of started in the linebacker room, and then it spread to our defense. Well, I don't really talk all the time about, you know, don't miss the tackle. I, don't, I, don't, I want to give them positive reinforcement. Go take your shot with the correct leverage angle. And you got 10 other guys better be running to the ball. So tackling is, is at, at a premium for us on how we're going to do it, the fundamentals of it, the willingness of it from, from a player, but also, you know, slowing down the, the film and showing them you know, throughout practice, okay, this probably, even though it's a thud situation, this probably would have been a missed tackle. Well, why was it a missed tackle? Because you didn't take the extra step, you didn't get your eyes in front, what was the reason for it, and then you try to correct it the next day. Last one, Scotty. Yeah, Barry, just uh, wanted your thoughts on a couple of the guys on the, the defensive front. Cam Ball, just mm -hmm. what you've seen from him, and then Isaiah, I think he's been running with the 
that first group too and, and sam spoke highly of him the other day yeah both both of those guys cam young kid isaiah a lot of reps uh i think both of them have upped their game in the last you know since we started from comparing to where they left off last season to where where they are today and just like every team in the pro or every player in the program should you better be better today than you were you know after we beat penn state that's just the way that it goes so cam ball didn't play that much last year uh i don't know if he labeled as red shirt or not but um so he's got a number of years left but but with jamil walker <clears throat> excuse me and his staff in the weight room he has transformed the our guys he's transformed them into bigger stronger faster quicker meaner tougher anything that you can look at it jamil's staff has, has done an unbelievable job and cam has been a guy that has fit into there and he went to work and he kept his head down and he's learned and he's been able to go play fast isaiah uh, with the same thing you know he's running with the the ones the twos the threes we're rotating so many guys in there but isaiah right now has probably had the most productive he and torian carter of any interior defensive lineman so far this spring he's playing with great on snap footwork great eye discipline great hand placement and and he's playing at a high level so we got to continue to work at that because those if you're not good inside up front uh, then you don't have a channel. I don't care how good you are on the back end, okay, or at linebacker, whatever. That's why Ridgeway was so important last year because he's a, just a beast inside, okay, and he took up a lot of times two guys and filled up space. Those guys inside with Torian and Cam and Isaiah, it, it's so important that we get some things solidified there with those three guys that that we feel comfortable uh, on how we're playing everywhere else. So they've done a nice job, and and they got to keep coming, keep pressing. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend.